So we need a way to access our sibling components again. Here is our ship entity we're building. I'll say ship. We have the renderer. We have the physics. And we have the controller now. We're writing the controller component. These are all bottle caps inside of our ship. These components that we can add to our entities. The physics component stores the velocity. And it also stores the angular velocity. I believe that's what I called it. Then the controller needs to say, hey, input, if rotate left is requested, then I need to update the angular velocity. Physics will use that to update the ship's rotation. And then render will go off rotation to position or turn our triangle on the screen to the correct correct orientation. Well, we don't have a way for the controller component to grab the physics component. It's very common in this component oriented system for one component to need to exchange information with another component. And so we need a way to grab the physics component uh, from the controller component. I'm going to snip this just for later reference, just in case we need that. Take that off the screen. Let's write a way for the controller component to grab the physics component. Let's go to Entity, and down here, I'm going to do some templates. I hope templates aren't new to you. If they are, I'm going to use the bare-bone basics of templates here. If templates are new to you, go check out the templates video. I'm going to say template, class T. I want to return a T star, and I'll call this get component. There'll be a const function because we're not going to modify the class. Now, one thing about templates, the compiler has to instantiate the code. Isn't that kind of weird, thinking that the compiler is instantiating code? Generally, we think of runtime code as instantiating objects, but now we're going to have the compiler actually instantiate the code. In order for the compiler to be able to instantiate the code, the code must be visible to the compiler, which we can do that with an INL file, or we can put it in the header file. Since this is short and sweet, I think it's more clunky to actually add another inline file for this, so we'll do it directly in the header file. Template, class, clat, class T. We're going to return to T star, entity, get component, const, like so. And then in here, what I want to do is iterate through all the components and find the component that the user is interested in. For example, in this case, we'll have a controller, we'll have a physics, and we'll have a renderer. And then from controller, I want to be able to say, hey, go give me the physics component. So we need to iterate all these components and say, hey, are you the physics component? Hey, are you the physics component? Oh, you are. Let me return you. So that's the that's the idea here. We need a for loop for you and I get zero. I less than num components, I believe it is. I plus plus. We're going to use some RTTI. Generally, RTTI is turned off in games. It's considered too slow. For what we're doing, we're doing some very bare bones, basic stuff. If it shows up in the profiler, then maybe we'll come back and readjust this. The RTTI is the dynamic cast. I have videos on dynamic cast if you want to go check that out. But essentially, I'm going to attempt to downcast the pointer at component sub i to the type that the caller is asking for. In this case, we will say, hey, physics component. Right? Physics component. Give me the physics component. And so we'll say dynamic cast to physics component. T is a type. It's a parameterized type. That's why we call them templates. We're used to adding parameters here. Well, now we're adding parameters up here. And instead of parameterizing values like so, we're parameterizing the type. And we shall pass physics we can pass physics, we can pass render, we can pass controller, we can pass any type in here, and then using that type we'll attempt to downcast to that type. Dynamic cast only works with pointers. If the cast succeeds, then ret will be the address of that T casted to the T, otherwise ret will be null. So we can say, hey, if ret is null, or if ret is not null, then we found it, return ret, otherwise, at the end of our for loop here, we'll just return null, indicating, hey, we, we didn't find it. You asked for it. I, I, I got nothing for you. All right, so that's the get component function. 
let's go back to here in the controller component. I want to say get parent, uh, get component, but I don't have IntelliSense because I haven't included entity in here. So pound include entity slash entity. Now I want to say get component. Give me the physics component, but we don't have physics component. Pound include entities, components, physics component, physics component. Give me the physics component, and its angular velocity will be 0.1. I hate magic numbers. Let's just const float angular velocity. We really should put this in a configuration file and read it from a configuration file. It could be a text file or a Lua file. We'll get around to doing that hopefully eventually. Uh, we'll just hard code it here for now. Control U to lowercase that. Angular velocity. If we're rotating left, that's a positive rotation, a counterclockwise rotation. So that will be angular velocity. Uh, if, if, M, hint put, you know, you know you're a real programmer if you cannot type in without throwing a T on the end. I, I just knew I had come to a new level of programming when I cannot avoid the temptation to throw a T on the end there. Anyway, input, not input. Uh, dot actions hot. Input. Rotate right. Okay, same idea here. Get parent. <sighs> Get component. Give me the physics component. Notice I passed the type in angle brackets here. It's kind of cool. It looks like I'm calling a function here, but instead of putting parentheses, I put angle brackets, and the compiler resolves the code for us. Angular velocity gets negative angular velocity, like so. I'm going to tab that out just so this aligns quite nice. So there we go. We can grab the physics component, rotate left, rotate right. Let's do acceleration while we're at it. Input. Ah, there I did it again. Input dot actions hot. Input accelerate. Get parent. Get component. Physics component. Acceleration. We don't have an acceleration. All we have is a velocity. So I think what I'll do is end the video here and patch this up in the next video.